Uh, hi everyone, uh, th thanks for joining. Um, this is Kirti uh, from Texas Instruments. Uh, I'll be presenting uh, uh, today's session on the, tweaking the uh, Linux boot flow for an accelerated ADAS experience. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, a little bit about us, uh, uh, both Brijesh and I joined Texas Instruments way back in 2007-2008, uh, so we are about 15 years in the same company. Uh, Brijesh has mostly worked on the real-time operating systems and uh, camera uh, vision use cases, uh, he's the expert in that and I have predominantly uh, worked on uh, Linux. Uh, Predominantly worked on uh, Linux uh, power management, thermal management, and uh, you, uh, boot time optimizations. Uh, so I'll start off with the agenda for today. Uh, so I'll explain what is the actual problem statement that we get from our uh, EDAS customers. Um, and then uh, before actually uh, diving deep into the software layers, uh, I would want to touch upon the SOC hardware architecture, which is uh, typical for any ADAS SOC. And then uh, I'll uh, deep dive into the various uh, uh, softwares that run on each course, uh, uh, starting with vision apps, uh, which I'll explain in some time, uh, the default boot flow, the time it takes to uh, boot to an ADAS use case with the default uh, behavior, uh, and uh, how we tweak the actual boot flow what is the impact of uh, boot media on each uh, phase of the boot uh, then uh, followed by the optimizations at uh, various boot stages including uh, bootloader uh, linux and file system and then uh, i'll touch upon how we had to redesign the adas use case to maximize the parallel processing on uh, various cores uh, i'll wrap up with results and then uh, giving a generic summary on how, how to accelerate adas use cases Okay, uh, so on the problem statement, uh, so basically it's to get the ADAS use case up and running uh, before the, uh, as and when the car starts. So the time is as soon as possible, so it's of the order of 2 to 3 seconds. And uh, Linux is expected to be the one that drives that and controls all the hardware accelerators and the uh, processing cores. Of course, we have heterogeneous cores uh, to execute in parallel. Uh, some of the most commonly used uh, uh, ADAS use cases that need early boot time are uh, 360 degree surround view for you to uh, get out of the parking and then uh, auto valet parking is uh, to actually uh, get, in, uh, get a parking slot and then uh, get inside that. Uh, early camera use case uh, for, the, uh, for backup reverse camera early display and uh, uh, camera mirror systems, the CMS systems. Uh, typically, we get uh, uh, boot time uh, optimizations on these use cases. Okay, before I uh, jump into the uh, software side of things, I just wanted to touch upon uh, with a typical uh, uh, ADAS SOC. Uh, this is uh, TDA4 vmint from the Jacinto family of SOC. Uh, we can see that at a top level, uh, there are green boxes, uh, there's a main main domain, uh, there's a wake up domain and there's a MCU domain. Uh, typically, uh, these are uh, voltage, these are called voltage domains which are uh, fed by individual voltage domains. The main domain is hosting all the uh, compute cores, uh, the, the big uh, ARM cores, a dual core A72, uh, the C7X DSP and uh, the C6X DSP and some R5 control cores. The MCU domain uh, hosts the R5 uh, co uh, dual core R5 subsystem, uh, which is actually the boot master. And there's the secure uh, wake up domain, which hosts the security controller, uh, which is a, basically a Cortex M3 and a bunch of peripherals. So you can see that uh, there are a lot more peripherals uh, that are getting controlled by these cores and used by these cores. So with this uh, introduction, uh, let me quickly jump into the deeper details. Uh, so, uh, for ADAS use case, we definitely need some sort of uh, real-time uh, uh, computing. So, we, we, we use real-time firm, uh, free autos, uh, real-time firmwares. Uh, 
Uh, Linux is mainly run on the application uh, ARM core and there is some secure uh, code uh, core that runs the uh, security foundational security firmware. So mapping the exact uh, SOC uh, view or uh, main domain. So I'll start off with the MCU domain uh, which hosts M uh, dual core MCU R5 typically run in uh, lockstep mode. This is our uh, bootmaster. Uh, this is the one uh, uh, that is uh, getting out of reset uh, by the ROM code. Uh, and then there is the Cortex M3 uh, which is our uh, security controller uh, which runs the TI foundational security firmware. And there are a bunch of cores in main domain which is uh, uh, R5F control cores, uh, ARM A72 cores, uh, C7X which is the DSP and uh, C6X. So uh, this main domain typically hosts all the uh, compute cores, uh, MCU is the startup uh, core and uh, M3 is a secure. So MCU is, uh, R5F is for uh, safety, uh, it's in lockstep mode, uh, M3 is the uh, secure monitor and then uh, all the rest are uh, compute cores. We can see that uh, apart from A72 which is the, uh, the Linux, which is running the Linux and M3 which is running a security uh, firmware, all others are mostly running uh, RTOS uh, which is free RTOS for uh, vision acceleration. Okay, uh, before I get to vision apps, uh, a quick uh, 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 ro I mean, run up on the uh, primary responsibilities of uh, Linux which is running, uh, which is run on uh, A72. Uh, all the storage uh, uh, is handled by Linux, uh, the MMC, EMMC uh, which hosts the root of S is uh, controlled and initi initiated by the Linux. The CPSW IP, which is the networking IP, which we need for real-time Ethernet uh, use case, is also uh, controlled by the Linux. And the most important part is uh, the Linux has the uh, remote proc drivers uh, to accomplish IPC communication with the other cores that I mentioned, the C66 and C7X DSP and the uh, R5F. Linux also controls the uh, graphics accelerator, so the uh, the graphics driver is a, a module in the Linux system, and the console which gets all the uh, application logs uh, is also controlled by Linux. And most important, the Linux uh, has the trigger to uh, uh, the applic uh, ADAS application, so the start of the application is triggered by Linux. So this is uh, a quick run on the uh, Linux uh, role. Uh, so Cortex M3 pretty much controls anything and everything related to the SOC on the uh, uh, TSOC uh, with anything and everything related with the foundational security. Uh, so M3 being a uh, relatively smaller core uh, does not have the compute power to do uh, complex cryptographic uh, operations like uh, AES, uh, SHA-512 and whatnot. So we have a dedicated uh, uh, security accelerator IP which is a hardware accelerator for uh, doing all the uh, cryptographic uh, functions. So some of the key roles that uh, uh, M3 uh, does is to do the foundational device security, uh, secure boot, uh, for any high secure samples we will use authentication to boot the uh, boot binaries and that authentication is done by the M3. And uh, uh, it, it also plays a, a pivotal role in uh, anti rollback protection wherein we can uh, we can make some of the bootloader versions obsolete and uh, program the e-fuse with the latest version so that uh, no security attack uh, can be done from the previous uh, uh, versions of the boot binaries. And it also supports uh, uh, derived key generation for support of third, P, uh, third party stacks. Uh, so this on the TIE foundational security. Uh, now uh, let's come to the uh, the actual uh, vision application. So, so what is vision apps? Uh, uh, so before I get, uh, so vision apps is actually a middle level framework which sits in between the driver and the uh, applications, and uh, which ca can pretty much uh, do any of the vision related application. So I'll start off with the bottommost row. Uh, bottommost row has all the cores that I spoke about before the control R5F, uh, the C6X uh, DSP, uh, the C7X DSP and uh, the A72 which runs Linux. So right above that is the uh, operating systems that uh, run on each of these cores. Uh, since these are mostly related to the vision acceleration use case, 
uh, all three of them are running the free orders version a72 uh, is like the master so it is running the linux uh, on top of the artos all of them have a flavor of ipc driver uh, that runs uh, so that each of the cores can talk to each other uh, on the r5f we see that uh, since it's a real time core uh, it real time control core all the time sensitive peripherals like the uh, camera capture uh, display drivers are uh, being owned by the r5f uh, c6x and c7x are uh, known for their uh, uh, processing capability or parallel processing capability so all the deep learning uh, algorithms are, are running on the c7x and c6x the tidl layer is uh, a acronym for uh, ti deep learning uh, this is all the deep learning algorithms that run on this so uh, all of this are in cup uh, are sort of uh, we have a middle layer layer uh, open vx which is common to all of this and uh, the, all of them have been wrapped up by open vx layer which is the uh, uh, vision apps for uh, ti and on top of that uh, any customer uh, 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 customer can de develop their own applications and uh, the de deep learning models can run using the vision apps and on the linux side um, any applications and uh, fusion algorithms could be run now uh, uh, a bit about what is why vision apps so as i explained before vision apps is a middle layer framework uh, which is based on the tiovx or the uh, standard open vx framework for ti platform uh, this framework supports heterogeneous uh, architecture so it integrates uh, different components in the form of a directed acyclic graph a dag and it realizes the system use case for vision processing so the biggest advantage of uh, vision apps is that it supports uh, uh, pipelining basically multiple cores can run multiple functions in parallel so that uh, we have maximum utilization of the hardware uh, this also supports and uh, manages uh, real time uh, peripherals like the cameras and the displays uh, there is a very good support for this and uh, between different layers uh, we need uh, buffer management we start passing buffers from one layer to the other one function to the other so this gives a very uh, uh, simplistic uh, 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 provision for passing buffers from one layer to the other and it also allows uh, running multiple uh, dependent and independent components on the same core multiprocessing uh, i'll take a simple example of uh, one uh, uh, directed acyclic graph so here we can see that uh, the camera is uh, feeding in the rgb format frame and then uh, this is taken as input from the color conversion uh, uh, function or the it's called uh, in the open ux uh, terminology any function that is done in a core is called uh, kernel uh, it's not to be confused with linux kernel so uh, i'll call it function so the color conversion function takes uh, input as rgb frame it, this is running on c7x or a dsp this is now passed on uh, uh, and it gets converted to yue frame gets passed on to the channel extract uh, functionality and then gray scale frames are uh, extracted which is then fed to the image pyramid which is run on a, a specific uh, ti uh, uh, hardware accelerator called uh, vision processor accelerator or the vpac uh, and it then gets passed on to the optical flow uh, and then uh, finally the harris track algorithm is run to track the key points in a uh, in a uh, uh, in a image and the output is rendered on the display so uh, so typically a uh, uh, vision application like a 360 surrounded view or a uh, auto valet parking will be a composition of multiple such graphs uh, running uh, parallel and seamlessly on multiple cores and uh, the advantage the other uh, advantages are mentioned in the next slide uh, so we already have uh, integrated uh, uh, basic uh, surround view application uh, like the another deep learning algorithms like auto valet parking camera mirror systems and early camera use cases uh, it uh, it already has a sample implementation of uh, uh, auto exposure and uh, white balancing for uh, isp processing uh, there's very good support for vision apps on uh, free autos and safe autos uh, for all the uh, remote cores like c6x and c7x and r5f cores uh, it also supports uh, HLOS like uh, Linux uh, and QNX uh, as the host core uh, for on A72 or A53. And some more uh, highlights on the vision apps. Uh, it, 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 it's uh, very good at uh, scheduling uh, graphs, so the directed acyclic graphs. 
uh, based on the availability availability of the hardware accelerators and the cores, different cores, uh, the vision apps can be used to split the various functions uh, in uh, in the graph uh, and uh, execute them in parallel on different hardware cores, taking advantage of the parallel execution. Uh, as mentioned earlier, it gives very good uh, abstraction of uh, memory management uh, functions. Uh, it abstracts out uh, cache maintenance and uh, other uh, reuse of scratch memory. Uh, one thing that I spoke was it can actually split based on the availability of uh, hardware accelerators, uh, multiple functions across multiple cores. Even the converse is true, wherein uh, if 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 uh, if a graph is uh, big and if it needs to be done in one core or uh, one hardware accelerator, the entire operation can be clubbed, uh, merged into one kernel or one function, and uh, this uh, in uh, this. Uh, enhances memory locality and uh, loss of any uh, uh, kernel uh, launch overhead. And uh, the, uh, the other advantage is that it uh, 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 enables data dialing. Instead of uh, acting upon one big image, uh, we can actually uh, take advantage of the data cache size and the local memory by splitting the uh, image into small tiles and uh, these functions get executed on small tiles, uh, getting better use of cache. Uh, with that, uh, yeah, so typically uh, fresh out of the SDK, uh, the boot flow is somewhat like this. As I mentioned, the ROM code brings the MCU domain R5F out of reset first. Uh, it loads the uh, secondary program loader or the SPL uh, of the U-boot world. It could be also uh, any uh, uh, RTOS boot loader, which, which could be more mean, mean, lean and mean. This bring uh, the MCU R5F is the boot core, which brings out all the other cores. Uh, for convenience sake, uh, I've just mentioned the main domain R5F and A72 here. The R5 SPL first brings the A72 out of reset and loads the ARM trusted firmware, and then loads the A72 SPL, and then uh, it loads. Uh, its own uh, firmware uh, that it needs to run for vision applications onto itself. This is a device manager firmware. Then SPL loads U-boot onto itself. Uh, then the U-boot, uh, which is the standard uh, bootloader for Linux, loads the uh, okay, this is, uh, loads all the other uh, core binaries for C6x and C7x and main domain R5F. All of these are loaded here. So it, it takes it typically takes about two seconds to get to U-boot uh, and then load all the other cores, and then once the other cores are loaded, uh, the U-boot loads Linux kernel and then uh, we get a full-fledged file system in about 20 seconds. So just to remind you, all of this is being done on MMCSD, which is probably the most common uh, storage media uh, for both boot media and rootfs. And then once the final uh, file system is up and running, we run the surround view application, which actually starts initializing the camera and whatnot uh, display, and then it takes about another five seconds. So typically it takes about 20 to 25 seconds to get the use case. Uh, this is not done to, like, it's not an inoptimal, it's, it's, of course it's taking a long time, but it is done to showcase all the hardware. So here, more or less all of the peripherals are getting in, uh, initialized in, in, in series and U-boot is given, uh, taken as a, a choice of bootloader because it's very flexible and it has the command line interface. We can do a bunch of uh, hacking around U-boot to do whatever uh, use case that we want to accomplish. So this is typically the boot flow. Uh, it's of course not the best optimized time. So uh, just giving the state of the art right now and then once we move, so once we start optimizing the boot time for any EDAS use case, the choice of boot media is very important. Uh, it's, to begin with, we can start with the MMC SD card. Uh, this is cost effective and it's very flexible. You can remove any time and just uh, replace the binaries. Uh, this is probably the slowest, uh, so it is definitely not recommended for early use cases. Uh, the next thing is EMMC. This is uh, this is pretty fast uh, when it comes to boot time, and uh, it's typically a large memory. It's of the order of 16 GB, 8 GB, 32 GB. So, if there is one, if there is provision for one boot media and one uh, that also being the uh, the rootfs host, 
then this is a preferred choice uh, this is pretty fast in booting as well and the final one uh, that we have to be typically use is the ospy or the hexpy flash uh, amongst the three uh, this is the fastest uh, uh, for uh, booting any uh, binary on the soc uh, the memory footprint is pretty small uh, it's around uh, 64 mb sometimes 120 mb so rootfs is definitely cannot be hosted so uh, uh, customer who can uh, afford uh, uh, two flashes uh, can choose ospy for as the boot media and emmc as the uh, rootfs host so yeah so emmc or ospy will uh, do good um, in case of boot time uh, constraints okay uh, so there were multiple layers that uh, were uh, explained in the default boot flow uh, uh, the r5 f spl arm trusted firmware uh, the SPL running on S22 U boot and then Linux and so all of these take time and all of these uh, come with uh, some cost. So instead of going through the full uh, uh, stack, we can optimize uh, wherever necessary. So instead of R5 SPL, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, loading the ATF and then the uh, SPL, we can directly load Linux kernel from R5 SPL so that we bypass uh, the U boot and the S22 SPL phase. Uh, this saves us a lot of time and instead of u-boot loading the uh, all the remote core binaries we can make r5 spl or the uh, secondary bootloader directly load the remote core firmware and once you load linux you can directly uh, start your uh, application so th this is uh, this is something what we call as falcon mode wherein we bypass u-boot and directly load linux from the spl stage <laughs> So when it comes to optimization bootloader, we should uh, be very well aware of the uh, UART speed. So typically if you have any console prints, uh, the first thing we need to do is to disable all of the console prints because UART is a very slow peripheral and adds time to the boot. And uh, going back, uh, so here uh, we are uh, loading the Linux kernel and also the remote cores. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do from the R5 SPL uh, is to load all the remote core firmware, uh, all the DSPs and the R5Fs uh, uh, as soon as the DDR is initialized. Uh, DDR initialization is mandatory for Linux to come up. So once the DDR initialization is done, you can start all the remote core firmware. And typically, uh, if, if the bootloader is very optimized and uh, uh, small in size, uh, we can start loading the, uh, the DSPs and the R5Fs in as early as 100 millisecond ballpark and uh, that's basically using ospy as the boot media to speed up the uh, booting against, against uh, mmcsd so in the uh, overall scheme of things uh, if you start uh, uh, with this bootloader optimizations we save about uh, 1.5 to 1.7 seconds in the boot phase in the bootloader phase i'll uh, jump on to the optimizations that we did on uh, linux side so in case <coughs> there are some peripherals that are never being used in the use case in the system we should uh, go ahead and disable those drivers and configs so that we try to get a very lean and mean kernel which saves time in uh, in actually loading the kernel and uh, again similar to bootloader there is a, a command line parameter called log level we can make that zero uh, by default so that none of the logs come on uart so all of the uart logs are suppressed uh, this saves the time pretty significantly if, if, if it's a, a normal size, uh, uh, normal kernel which has about say 200, 300 lines of uh, prints before we get to the command prompt, uh, we save about uh, anywhere between 2 to 3 seconds. And uh, yeah, as I commented on the boot media slide, uh, we can host the entire file system in EMMC instead of MMCSD, uh, EMMC being the faster peripheral. Now uh, let's move to the device tree side of things. So uh, there are a lot of uh, devices again that are uh, getting a new that are not really used in this use case. So we we can disable all of these uh, uh, device tree nodes that are not really used in this use case. And uh, we should give a priority to loading of uh, C6x, C7x, or the R5 cores. Uh, so uh, basically, load the uh, highest priority cores first, which has. Uh, uh, the uh, demand of boot time and uh, if, if the MMC SD is enabled please disable that that adds a lot of time uh, and uh, yeah finally switch the file system from uh, SD to EMMC 
the whole optimizations could save us about six to seven seconds to get to file system. And uh, moving on to the file system related optimizations, uh, typically uh, Yocto based full fledged file systems are of the uh, order of 2 GB uh, to, to 3 GB. So loading the file system itself takes a lot of time. So uh, we should optimize on the size of the file system. And uh, if we actually come to a very bare minimal busy box kind of file system, we really don't have any library uh, functionality that we can utilize to run something like as complex as vision apps uh, use case. So uh, we should take the best of both worlds. So um, I, we typically copy all the libraries from the full fledged file system to the tiny rate of S and come up with something like a hybrid file system, which is bare minimum for uh, executing that particular uh, uh, ADAS use case. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so the hybrid file system should be around 200, 300 megabytes, which was about two to three GB in the original file system. And uh, the other portion of file system optimization is to uh, not go through the entire uh, uh, 6V init uh, kind of uh, uh, default uh, uh, file system services uh, initialization. Instead, we could write our own uh, simple init script, which does exactly what is needed for uh, this ADAS use case. Uh, instead of booting all the way to uh, uh, init script, uh, a command prompt, we can use a init script to do the minimal task, just to uh, mount the necessary file system folders, uh, load the modules that are necessary to run that particular uh, use case, uh, which is typically the R5F uh, remote proc and the, uh, the C7X remote proc and the graphics driver, which are used by Linux for realizing that use case. Uh, so since there are a lot of uh, uh, file system services that run at def by default, uh, it, it saves a lot of time. So uh, typically all those uh, uh, take about eight to 10 seconds in, uh, to get to Linux prompt. So this is uh, one of the bigger piece that we saved in file system. Uh, uh, as I uh, uh, explained earlier, vision apps is the one that actually does all the compute on the C7X, C6X and the camera processing. So by default, uh, the flow was to wait for the Linux to come up before initializing the camera. So that was getting delayed uh, and typically the camera initialization is a very time consuming operation as it is uh, connected over the I2C. So what we did was to tweak the uh, use case a bit. Uh, the default was uh, uh, in the, in the uh, R5F control core which starts the camera. The UART was initialized first and then the IPC and then uh, the I2C which is Uh, which is needed by the uh, camera. Uh, so this was the default boot flow. Uh, so what we did was to prioritize the camera initialization back because it takes a lot of time. So we directly go ahead and initialize I2C and then uh, we start initializing camera, which is about 1000 to 2500 I2C writes. So th that's why this has to be prioritized first. And then we can go ahead and do the rest of the things. So it is just realizing what is the uh, what comes in the critical path, and then prioritizing it uh, in the early in the boot. On the imaging front, uh, uh, since uh, surround view needs about four cameras, and four cameras uh, uh, use I2C to get the registers programmed. There is something called I2C broadcast, uh, which could be used wherein all the four cameras get the same commands and get initialized uh, in parallel. And uh, typically, the uh, the there is a Sardis uh, serializer, deserializer sitting in between, which also is connected via I2C. Uh, so all of them have some guard delays just to avoid some uh, uh, values that not not really correctly written. So we could optimize a lot of uh, delay in register programming of all the uh, I2C. Uh, and uh, there's something called multi-byte transfer uh, on I2C. When the, the, uh, the I2C address is contiguous, uh, instead of sending every byte at a time, we could use the multi-byte transfer wherein we can uh, program 1000 registers at a time uh, as the register addresses are uh, very much contiguous. 
So these optimizations reduce the camera initialization time from anywhere between three to four seconds to about 600 to 700 milliseconds. So at pretty much every possible stage of uh, uh, executing the use case, we are trying to cut down on the time. So yeah, so this was the uh, final uh, uh, time that we could achieve. Uh, uh, so the bootloader uh, comes up in like 300 milliseconds. Uh, after that, about uh, uh, plus 400. So basically, seven, by 0 0.7, 0 0.8 sec, uh, seconds, we are able to get to the Linux uh, starting. And then the initialization script to load the different uh, modules and uh, mount the file system. And uh, yeah, camera initialization, as I told, uh, it takes uh, much more time. So it uh, took about another 500 milliseconds. And then uh, the surround view app application running uh, was about 550. So overall, we could get the entire 20 seconds of that use case reduced to two, two seconds. And uh, uh, yeah, so we we were using uh, the 5.10 uh, uh, LTS, and we have also migrated to the 6.1 LTS now. So the time is anywhere between two to three seconds to uh, realize this uh, uh, complex use case as uh, surround view. Yeah. So the 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 optimized boot flow now. Uh, the uh, the R5F uh, directly loads the uh, uh, the TF foundational security firmware. It also loads the ATF and uh, the device manager binary onto itself and also Linux. So directly from ATF, we are jumping to Linux, which is uh, bypassing the U-boot phase of the A72. Uh, Linux is also very minimal uh, with all the reduced uh, drivers and reduced device tree blobs. So only the uh, required uh, drivers, uh, remote core drivers and the GPU drivers probe. And then uh, the, the uh, BusyBox root FS is mounted. That's the hybrid root FS, and then the uh, front view application starts running. So uh, the time that was about 20 seconds got almost reduced to two seconds uh, with the uh, optimizations that we did. So, so I want to just conclude with uh, generic guidelines on how to optimize a uh, ADAS use case. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> before getting to the software optimizations, uh, as I mentioned in the boot media slide, it's very important that we pick the right boot media which is fast enough. Uh, so uh, typical rep recommendation is OSPI, XPI, or EMMC flash. And uh, uh, always use uh, multi-OS strategy instead of one core uh, running uh, everything in serial. So use uh, as, as many cores as there, make use of them, run a real-time OS or uh, any flavor of OS on them to get the execution in parallel. Uh, optimize bootloader. Uh, to load the critical firmwares, critical softwares first uh, before the others one, others get loaded. In case you are using uh, vision apps or uh, something similar uh, uh, frameworks, uh, ext uh, like extract or uh, manipulate the ability to run pipelines uh, as much as possible. And uh, for vision use case wherein camera is mandatory, please prioritize camera initialization. It, it takes a lot of time to initialize cameras uh, because uh, there's a lot of I2C or spy rights which are more slow peripherals. And uh, wherever possible, uh, don't use software algorithms. Uh, there are uh, multiple hardware accelerators on each uh, ADAS SOCs. Offload the compute to these hardware accelerators uh, or, and then that will also reduce the boot time. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, any delays uh, that were uh, that are added as guard delays to write uh, these I2C peripherals, please optimize those delays. And uh, design your use case in such a way that uh, always uh, all these uh, things are uh, running in parallel and nobody is waiting for another. So that that avoids uh, any any delays. Okay, I think that uh, I'm done with my slides. Thank you. Open for questions.